Parachute troopers, the hour of decision has come. You gained great fame during the conquest of Poland. Now the enemy threatens the Ruhr. We must defend ourselves. The fate of Germany for a thousand years hangs on our action. Our job is to break open the fortress Holland. The enemy's bridges were to be blown up. The bridges by Mordike and before Rotterdam, the German advance might be stopped. German parachute infantry, into your aircraft. This is Holland, Germany's small neighbor. The heart of the Netherlands, guarded by the broad estuaries of the Lower Rhine and the flood areas of the Zuider Zee, has been surrounded with a belt of strong points and water crossings until it's a single great fortress. It must be smashed to protect the German north flank from a possible base for British land and air operations. Through the bridges by Moordijk and at Rotterdam, the parachute infantry is to break open the fortress. The objective, the bridges of Mordike, 
The view of these two crossings makes it clear that the success of the parachute troopers would be decisive for the campaign. Get ready. Parachute troopers assemble and advance against their chosen objectives. Some from the southern riverbank, some on the north. One platoon attacks the highway bridge. To the east, the railway bridge is assaulted from both ends at once. A third attack strikes out for the town of Mordyke, while to the south, one company must overcome the Dutch field fortifications. With their commander leading the way, another platoon drives south to neutralize the Dutch storm force. machine gun fire, the field fortification is stormed. At the highway bridge, the parachute troops have already gained the upper hand. The garrison of the shed housing the detonating switches is surprised and overwhelmed. It's necessary at once to cut all remote control explosion wiring. Forward, over the bridge. It's three quarters of a mile across. To 
the east on the railway bridge, the platoon is continuing its advance. It runs into some resistance at the railroad embankment. On the highway bridge, the platoon commander and one sergeant have reached the north bank. A Dutch machine gun bunker. The men inside won't surrender. The job will have to be done the hard way. Bring a concentrated charge to shove inside. Meanwhile, on the railway bridge, the other platoon has worked its way across the tracks to get behind the embankment. The last resistance is from the bridge houses. The defenses are knocked out. Back at the highway, the two men who crossed the bridge are still alone. They hurry back the way they came with but one thought in mind, to prevent the Dutch from blowing up the bridge by long distance through some hidden wiring. This could happen as long as all the mines and explosive charges down on the bridge piers haven't been removed. Someone has to go underwater and detach the mines from the base of the concrete supports. The Dutch are still firing all around. Their artillery has at last gotten the range. Shell fire is mixed with the hail of machine gun bullets. So, in the girders of the superstructure, the rest of the charges have to be found and made hot.
the meantime, there's bitter fighting for the town of Mordyke. Resistance is crushed in the outlying houses of the village. attack across the street is too tough. The right way is to get around behind through the backyard. After a hard fight, Mordyke is in German hands. Two hours after the jump, the main part of the job has been done. The parachute troopers have stopped the blowing up of the bridges and killed or taken prisoner all the defenders of this vital crossing. On the railway bridge, contact is at last being made with the detachment on the north bank. in enemy country, the parachute troopers come together. The holding of besieged Mordyke. After battering down enemy bunkers and strong points, the battalion has formed a hedgehog line of defense. At the same time also at Dortrich, Rotterdam and The Hague, parachute and airborne troops fought hard and victoriously. It was by this means that the great fortress of Holland was broken open from within, while the Nazi army pushed across the borders from the east. May 10th, 1940, German troops crossed the Albert Canal north of Maastricht. At the same time, they break through the Peel forts. May 11th, the Germans reached the Essel positions on the Grave line. May 12th, the Nazi columns passed through Tilburg and Breda toward Dortrich on their way to relieve the airborne infantry on the defensive at Rotterdam. At Mordyke, the troopers hold on. A French motorized division attacks from the south, but the lines hold around the bridgehead at Mordyke. Isolated, surrounded, and attacked, holds out for three days and two nights. A fierce artillery fire, Dutch batteries are still trying to destroy the bridges. Stukas, artillery on wings, come to give relief and support to the troopers.
German reconnaissance plane. Signal panels are laid out for a target. He's bringing a message from headquarters. German troops only 25 miles away. The mission at Mordyke has been accomplished. The first break into a fortified region from the air and the quick relief of the shock troops by the main armies breached the Dutch lines of defense. This set the stage for the surrender of the Netherlands on the 14th of May, 1940, after scarcely five days of battle.